me. God, do I have a red enough face? Why is my face so red? I guess only you would know. Good man. Maybe, well, maybe you're just uh, enjoying the uh, the southern redneck style. Mm, That's me. Go. I'm a, now a redneck, literally. Yeah. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show with Doug Sprinthal, Mike Gelfand, and Andy Rampernard. Now we're cooking with gas. So what's going on? You do two been schmoozing, have you? Yeah, we've been talking about the joys of employment. The joys of employment are good. Mm-hmm. Employment is a good thing. There's no question about that. Um, God, you know what's interesting? I had a couple of guests on this morning on the show. One of them was from Scotland. The other one was from Key West. And the, the one thing that they brought up, one, now remember, one's from Scotland, not even from America, is the hatred that's being spewed on the news around the world. It's not just in America. Yeah. My God, everybody just hates everybody. You know, America's number one export to other countries is our news, unfortunately. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Why? I mean, I understand you can have your differences and your, you know, your left, your right, your centrist, whatever it is. You're a Democrat, you're a Republican, but hatred. I just, I really don't understand it. I don't, why are people in, what caused that, do you think? Well, you know, I think uh, a lot of it begins with what we call identity politics. Yeah. If the, you know, if the person who lives next door, or it could be your brother-in-law, if they don't vote the way you do, then they're just, you know, they're pieces of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's exactly how they feel. It's not just that you disagree with me. You're a horrible person. Yeah, which is true in many cases, but still. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you're the one to ask about hating people. That is true. That's oh, very come on. Now. Hateful as they get. I, I, you know, I, I don't have time for hate. Well, you're a Jew, so I'm glad to hear that because you guys are going through a hell of a deal right now. It's Mike, I just cannot believe what's happening to the Jews. I can't. Well, I mean, look at, look at history. I mean, in the larger context. It's not very surprising. There's a whole book about it. Yeah, I well, the know. first half anyway. Yeah, <laughs> the first half is yeah the first half of the books about it. But I just I, first of all, why would you want to take your time and energy hating any? I don't hate anybody. There's some people I don't like. Yeah, I don't hate anybody. They're too much waste of time. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. Why should I spend time hating people when I can get down on the fourth race at Tampa Bay Downs? See, now you're talking. There's no it's question. Priorities. It's all about priorities. It's got to be productive. Well, and I'm blame, I blame people like Doug because, you know, he grew up around that, you know, college education deal and they've destroyed America. So, you know, where do you go, Doug? Yeah. Yeah. It's your parents' fault. It's all yeah. those horrible engineers and doctors all over the place yep, building stuff and helping people. We have. We don't need colleges. Need we have our guests on the line. Oh, Owen's already. Uh, Owen, how Hello. are you? I'm 16 years old. <laughs> You're, you're I'm 16 going on 17. That's what I say whenever I play. I'm 16 and I play like I'm 17. So Okay, when are you going to be 17? <laughs> uh, April. April's coming up, man. Oh, my oh, God. Next is. month you'll be 17 years old. So where would you grow up, Evan? Uh, well, I grew up in Rosemont, Minnesota, but I like to say I'm from Canyon, Minnesota. My grandfather had a farm there. Oh, okay. And, uh, gosh, I lived there for 12 years till he passed away. And I, I, like to, I like to call that place home, yeah. What mom and dad give you the stiff arm? Go go live with grandpa. Get away from <laughs> exactly. Him. No, no, you understand. Yeah. No, they they just said no. Go go there. We don't we don't want you here. Go work there. Go do some stuff there. Yeah. They always you need help. You must really miss the Koch brothers' smokestack there, huh? Oh yeah, I pass by there all the time off fifty two or fifty five. Sure. sure. Yeah, fifty two. Yep. Is there? This is good. You know, it's going to be fun here. Uh, Owen Evans with us this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Minnesota uh, boy is making his way, the Frost. And uh, we're lucky today, Owen, because you're not the only musician in studio. We always, you got Doug Sprinthal. How many, how many years have you been in and out of bands, Dougie? I'm retired. Well, <laughs> I, I started when I, I think I played my first band when I was 14. So that was 51 years ago. However many years. So, Owen, when did you start? Gosh, I started in middle school, and I'm 16 now, so four or five years ago. So yeah. about, 11, about 11 years. That's when I, started. Well, yeah. I was in a band starting at 11 years old, too. I played the drums in a band at 11 years old. And uh, What attracted you both to – Doug, I can't see you. You're off camera. Oh, I'm sorry. you got to move toward <laughs> the middle. 
a little. There you go. That's perfect. So anyway, what drove both of you to, to band? I, I, first of all, I want to hear you two guys talking about bands because I am fascinated by that. Two musicians talking to one another about what it means to be a musician Dude, in a you band. Know, you know the reason. It's not that complicated. Yeah, I Ch- know. Chicks, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> One goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the right answer. That's but always is, is it true that it's is it true that the drummer always lines up on, on top? I don't mean that literally, but <laughs> Well, I, you know, in bands, there's the the, uh, the ongoing battle. It's chicken or egg. Who's leading the band, the bass player or the drummer? Yeah. Oh, sure. And they all mm. think they are. And the guitar players go, you guys just knock it off. I haven't had the, um, I haven't been able to play with a band yet. I'm always playing like by myself. I'll do like open mic nights in Lakeville all the okay. time. But uh, no, I wish I could play with a band. It's way more fun because like I play a lot of slower songs, but if I got a drummer or something, I can just get get the people going play country roads and everybody starts singing like it's great it's great if you know a couple of blues tunes I've, i can recommend some places that i'd love to have you oh Jeez. thanks man I, i'm lo- constantly looking to, for places to play well on facebook there's the uh minnesota blues society and they there's it's a really active scene and it's fun i've been out of work all winter and so this has been my bowling night mm. so i have different <laughs> friends that run them uh, and it's kind of like Little League, where everybody gets to play, and a lot of the players are terrible. Uh, but there's a couple <laughs> of kids, there's a couple of shortstops that can wing it and you know hit it, uh, you know, opposite field and stuff like that. So it's it's a very su- supportive thing. It does limit itself to blues music typically, but there's a really good one on every other Sunday at a VFW in Bloomington. That's just a it's kind of like watching a Fellini movie actually, with a cast of characters that show up, but it's fun and some great players too. I could see that to be true. No, oh, and I'm looking at a picture of you. Uh, you're sitting on a uh, sitting down. You, you got a guitar on your lap. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason I even bring that up, and Doug will understand that. Well, everybody will understand this. So Doug and Owen, guitar players, all the rest of it. Whenever I would go um, to do a do an appearance, you go into the bar, and these young women come over. Oh, I, are you in the band? I say, yeah, yeah, I'm in the band. Yeah. It was called Take Five. Was the name of the band at the time. Yeah, I'm in take five. Have so oh, really? That's so great. That's wonderful. So, what do you do in the band? And I go. I'm the drummer, and they go, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's very true." By the way, oh, you're the drummer. Oh, great. That's that's wonderful. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's re- that's really cool. How did it all get started for you? And how old were you when you said, "I want to I want to be playing music"? Well. I was on the radio yesterday. I was on WCCO, and uh, I kind of told them, I was like, I constantly was watching my my great uncles play. And um, for years, we had big parties that we called Boomer Fest because that's our last name uh, is Boomers. But anyway, uh, with in these parties, we'd, we'd, I'd watch them play, and um, constantly that was like what I wanted to play. And I started playing at 11, you know, in middle school. And yeah, right. uh, that was kind of my inspiration was was my uncles. And this new song that came out uh, a couple weeks ago, just another memory on my mind, it's with my uncles. And uh, he, my, my uncle Randy, he wrote the song. And uh, they constantly wanted him to release it. And he never did, but I got him really? to do it with me. So, uh, no, they're my inspiration. And that's kind of when I started was middle school, so. Yeah, you know, that's kind of what I, I suppose I was inspired by my father when I was very little. My father was a really good harmonica player. That boy could play a harmonica, man. It was unbelievable. Mm. It's the only talent he had because he sucked as a father. But anyway, <laughs> moving forward from there. Most harmonica players are shitty dads. He sold his <laughs> old, <laughs> not old, not a, a junior Parker, horrible father. <laughs> that's just how it goes. There's no question about it. No, but being in a band is very cool. Like I said, I was about 11. I think I was 11 to 19. I played in a band. And it uh, it is a lot of fun going on tour and all the rest of it. There's a lot of excitement. Just to be up on stage having people, you know, clapping for you, is it's a very special experience. It's surreal. Yeah, it's really fun. There's no question about it. Dougie, what do you think? Well, I have an alternate. I think it's like having five girlfriends. Everybody <laughs> thinks that having five girlfriends would be cool until you actually have five girlfriends and it's a total pain in playing a dance is terrible <laughs> i mean it, it, everybody it, there's it, it, it has to be such a confluence of factors to make it enjoyable everybody has to be pretty close to the same talent level which is important but their personalities have to get along as well and it's you know when you get four or five people that 
are good musicians and are flexible and grown up. I, that's rare. I mean, look at the famous rock bands. Yeah. They kicked Lindsey Buckingham out of um, yeah. uh, Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood These guys are all millionaires and they're acting like they're, no offense, Owen, 15. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I see how it is. I it's see how it is. The so, guys that I admire, though, are the Rolling Stones. Good. Yeah. Nick Jagger's in his 80s, and he's running around. He's, yeah. he's running five miles a day before a show at 80 years old so he can entertain the troops. That just blows my mind. He's got the moves. I'm 15, and I'm, I'm telling you right now, I don't run before I play. I'm really <laughs> well, you don't have to. <laughs> well, there's one thing we got to mention about Mick Jagger too. He's like five one and weighs about eighty pounds. So. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't take a lot of force to move that body <laughs> around. Right. Like exactly. That. No, he actually is about what five six something like that. Yeah, he, he's he's diminutive. Let's say that. I, was I to think five six I, is diminutive to you. It's average, isn't it? I don't five, know. Six, five, seven? It's yeah. Average six, five seven. It's average to me. I know that. Well, that's a th- yeah, that's the thing. It depends on who you are. But you're like you know eight feet I, tall. I so. know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, Google says he's 5'10", but I don't know if I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh-huh. pumped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Five, you know, somebody, ten. Uh, Tim Pawlenty was over, I don't know, some monument over in India or something or whatever. And he said the weirdest thing happened because I'm just enthralled by all the beauty of all this, that, and the other thing. And I look up, and walking down the stairs that I'm walking up, is Mick Jagger with his then girlfriend, and I don't remember who it was. He told me, but I don't remember her name. He said Mick and his girlfriend are walking down the stairs, and she is literally a foot taller than he is. <laughs> it's like, well, he was married to what was her? She's a model, Jerry Hall. Yeah, Jerry yeah, Hall. Hall she's like yep. six feet tall. I mean, she's yeah, a, she was she's gorgeous, but she had a very tall woman. Yeah, she was indeed. There's no question. So, Owen, what's your ultimate goal? What do you want to do with your? I mean, you're doing well locally. Uh, there's uh, the, the amazing thing about the world now is you're local, you're statewide, you're United States wide, or you're worldwide. I mean, you can be exposed to everybody at the drop of a hat. That's yeah. pretty interesting. Um, my ultimate goal, uh, just get as much as I can out before I have responsibilities. You know, I'm at, a, I'm in high school. Like my only responsibility right now is school. So, and I don't do sports, so I treat this as my sport and, yeah, you know, I try to have fun with it as I do it, you know, and that's my goal just get more stuff out and have fun while I'm doing it. No, are you is like your grandfather, or your parents listening right now? Is that what, what you're indicating? Yeah, I'm assuming, I'm assuming they're listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. The funny thing is, they're always, they're always saying, like, hey, when you're famous, you get me backstage tickets, and mm-hmm. I, I don't see that at all, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I'm gonna have fun while I'm, while I'm here doing my thing, you know. It is fun it, to be in a band when you're a teenager. And Doug, you were there uh, a higher level than I was, but it is fun to be in a band when you're a teenager. There's no doubt about that, right? Oh yeah, no, it's it's a passion, and you want to play all the time, and it's great. Oh yes, I love playing instruments. <laughs> I have much musical talent. <laughs> so, have you ever wanted to play an instrument, either Michael Gelfand or Andy? Uh, I mean, if I could snap my fingers and be a, you know musician sure but it's a lot of effort yeah my <laughs> the only thing i could i could really accomplish with my fingers <clears throat> beat for punchline is um mm-hmm. is, was just typing so that's how i became yeah. a writer because i could type but i i couldn't really play an instrument yeah i'm great on the keyboard just not that keyboard <laughs> yeah i exactly. suppose that's true i love this dad owen released his first single running in 2023 with 57,000 listens across all platforms. That's very impressive, Owen. I I don't know how, but I'm excited that people listen to it and they enjoy it. So I've gotten good feedback. So it, it makes me happy, man. Really happy. Do you, do you lean toward country or is that exclusively what you play? I I, I exclusively play country, but uh, I'm trying to explore some, some new stuff. You know, whenever I go to a bar, somebody's always like, you got to play this song. And I'm like... I don't know that song, so I'm constantly trying to learn new stuff and uh, just get everything that people like and whatever. You know, the first country song I ever heard, because I grew up in North Minneapolis, not a lot of country mm-hmm. music being played yeah. in North Minneapolis, but I got attracted to, and I don't remember who the artist was. Uh, Doug, you would know this, I'm certain. 
I got attracted to country music because one of the titles, and I love the titles of country music, by the way. They're very, very hmm. inventive, very, very impressive. But I started listening to country music after I heard a song, You Can Have Your Kate and Edith Too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Mike, Mike's more of a country expert, uh, I think, than I am. I don't think that was a big hit. You know, I mean, uh, I, I'm not familiar with that. I'm familiar with a Love lot of it. country songs with great titles. You know, like, uh, like uh, she's acting single and I'm drinking doubles. Yes, I she love got it. The gold mine and I got the shaft. But, mm. <laughs> but, but that one, you know, the one I mentioned, of course, that was uh, what was his name? Gary. Uh, Gary. He was. He was like a. His, his thing was sort of like hillbilly country and, but he was Gary Stewart. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and he was really good. I've got some of his, uh, some of his stuff and um, yeah, but he was true to the country legend. He, uh, he did shoot himself. Oh God. Oh. Well, aren't you happy to be on such an <laughs> upbeat show? Well, Owen? So many, so many <laughs> of these country singers, you know, going back to, to when I started listening to country, which was in the sixties, you know, so many of them came to a very bad ending. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot yeah, of them, really. yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. they, they grew up, you know, and they grew up and a lot of them grew up like in West Virginia. And so today they'd be doing meth, but back in, then it was just drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But the Coca-Cola had cocaine in it. So, you know, so, so, it did yeah. back in those days. It did. Yeah. That was like 1894. Yes, it was. <laughs> 60s, 1890s. It's all the same. Yeah, it's the same. What's the yeah. difference? It's oh, really boy. nice to meet you guys. You know, this is, this is fun. <laughs> You're learning a lot. Fun stuff. Learn a lot about how A lot of fun to stuff. How not to act. So, so Owen, do you go on the road? I mean, are you, are you doing that thing, thing yet? <laughs> Uh, I wish I was going on the road right now. I'm playing, I live in Rosemont, so I'm playing a lot in Dakota County. Uh, like, uh, oh, okay. this summer I'm playing Dakota County fair. Uh, and that was actually my first gig last year. So, uh, my first like big gig anyway. And, uh, I play a, a lot locally, so I'd love to go play on the road though. Uh, eventually once I get a little bigger of fan base and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I, when I think of Rosemont, I think of the, uh, the story about there, there's a strip joint right by the Rosemont. It's been closed for 15 years. You're talking about Jake's. Jake's, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> not in Rosemont. Oh man, this is fun. <laughs> well, theoretically, yeah, but it's right next to it. And he, Jake. Oh, and we got to defend Rosemont. I live in uh, by Evermore, just so you know. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, go ahead, Gil. Well, I was just gonna say the deal with Jake. I don't know if the guy's name really was Jake, but he ran for mayor. And uh, then there was some suggestion that there might have been uh, might have been some fraud involved because mm. there were like 50 strippers who all voted for him and they all listed their address as Jake. at Jake's yeah. bar. So unfortunately, <laughs> he never really got to be the mayor. Very sad. Yeah, that bill. Uh, we drove by there. My sister lives in in uh, Rochester, and Jake's has gone. The building isn't even there anymore. Oh, the only really? thing there is the House of Coats. I'm glad you told me that. So I was going to stop by this yeah. afternoon. The two for Pay one respects. <laughs> the elbow you know, special. I won't say who this is, but I uh, Owen have a let's say I'll just say it's a relative that mm. I have uh, who set a record for being thrown out of Jake's. <laughs> <laughs> it cannot be easy to be thrown out of a strip bar, can it? Uh, I think it's easy if mm. you know what to do. I had a friend of mine that got thrown out of Rick's because he had these women convinced that, that he was um, Steve Winwood, which was <laughs> odd because Bubba was 6'2 and about 300. <laughs> and he wound up in the mud wrestling pit and oh, God. wrestling a couple of women. And they, they decided that they didn't need Steve Winwood in the bar anymore. Yes, that does happen. There's no That's question. So sad. Owen is going, what in the hell have I got myself <laughs> and, into? And, and, and you accused me of telling bummer stories. <laughs> no, this I'm enjoying this, man. This is great. <laughs> this is the real world. Well, you know what's great for me? Owen, this is giving you an example of how wonderful my life is because I got to mm. I got to interview uh Tony Kern, who's one of the greatest Scottish actors out there. He's got a new mm. movie coming out. He plays King Edward the First, and mm. I'm laughing and joking with him and then we have uh, a couple people on, one from Key West, one is in town. And matter of fact, Andy's going to meet with him after the show. And then you come on. I love that about my life, that you're interviewing people from uh, three different places on earth. And you have a ball. To, you have fun doing it. It's great. Yeah. You know, I, I, which I think is very good. Doug, you got into that whole deal, didn't you? Which whole deal? Uh, you know, being on a show, you interview people. and do Oh, yeah, yeah. Stuff. No, that was fun. I 
it's I think interviewing people is harder than people know. Really? Um, yeah. Well, oh, I mean, absolutely. you're a natural at it, but I, I think that I'd say 70% of the people, if you dig, if you know what buttons to push, you can get good stories out of them. Oh, yeah. We've had a couple over the years on the, on the Car Selling Secrets podcast that, you know, outside of here, they're gregarious and outgoing and got a million stories. Yeah. And you put a mic on them. Oh, yeah. And absolutely. it's like name, rank, and serial number. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, what's new exciting in your world? <laughs> Nothing. I, I, Where are we in the night of the 17th? I prefer not to answer. It's like, dude, you're so effing boring. I don't do things. Sound like the comedians we've had on the show. That's man. right. Oh, that's <laughs> cold. Sometimes. I hope I'm better than that. Oh, you're fine. Oh, you're fine. Man. Well, and you're doing a great You're, you're always welcome to come back. So you're I got a question for you, Owen. Rosemont High School, is that where you go? Yes, sir. You guys Rosemont get High School. the best marching band in the planet. Do you have oh, any it's crazy. On that? It's crazy. We have so we go out to football and uh, like we'll play fo- at the football stadium, and of course the band comes comes out on the football yep. stadium at halftime. Everybody is going insane. They treat it like like a cult. It's it's crazy. Everybody is in it, and if you're not, you'll get yelled at by somebody who's in charge. Like you need to start screaming for the band right now. And oh man, no, our band is crazy. Our football team is crazy. It, yeah, it, yeah. I I love going to Rosemont. Years Absolutely. ago, we were my wife and I rode bikes to it was Rudy's Red Eye Grill, and we cut through the the high school, and That's it's like five now. in the afternoon, uh, in, in the summertime, and the band's out there practicing. Mm-hmm. And we got done at the bar, riding bikes home three hours later, and they're still out practicing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, holy buckets! This is not the band that I grew up in. I live miles away from from the the school, yeah. and I'll be sitting in my backyard. And I can hear them for like three or four hours. Yeah, <laughs> playing. I'm like, holy Man. moly! They practice a lot, a lot. So our listener Joe wants to know if you plan on playing at Leprechaun Days. Leprechaun Days. Um, I was <laughs> invited, um, but I haven't. Well, actually, no, I wasn't invited. I have a bunch of people that want me to play there, though. I would love to play there, um, because they got some pretty cool bands that come there, and uh, it'd be a cool experience. You know, that's try, the whole time that comes. Try, try uh, Panaprog, too, in Lakeville. Okay. That's yeah. their big festival. It stands Ooh. short for Panorama of Progress, which is, hmm. could they have come up with a worse name? <laughs> hey, Panaprog. 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 It sounds like a drug. It does. Leprechaun Days is fun, though. I, I have enjoyed it since I was a little kid. So yeah. it'd be really cool to go play there. Absolutely. They, so, they asked me to be the Grand Marshal, but oh. I took it as an insult. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Right. Yeah, leprechaun. The hat was just too big. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was the major problem. All right, so Owen, your appearance is coming up in the next, uh, say, three, four, five weeks. You got some, because mm-hmm. people are, after you've been on now, people are going to want to come and see you. Oh, I'd love, I love it. Yeah, I got, uh, I had a song that just came out two, two, uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, and uh, this Friday, I have a song coming out. Uh, the cool thing is, I'm, this is my first time doing collaborations. So oh, I did yeah. I did a collaboration with my uncles on the last song that just came out and it's my fastest growing song ever ever like my first song it took a lot a few months for it to get to like even a thousand people listen to it on Spotify and this one in like 4 days boom it's and for me that's that's crazy so uh but anyway we got uh a song coming out with my buddy Alon Blust and he's got some songs on Spotify and everything else and uh the cool thing about that song is I'm more of a, like a high tenor and he's got that low Johnny Cash bass. So, oh, yeah. Oh, I just love it. It's a cool, cool song. And the thing I like about these new songs that I'm producing is uh, they're all got that old timey feel, which mm-hmm. which is the songs that I like to do. And I think I think there's a difference between the songs that you like to do and a lot of the times the songs that people will really like. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I really love it. And I hope everybody else enjoys it and sees uh, the fun and uh, the process of of doing it. Uh, uh, a third song that's just that's just me singing and it's it's got that just acoustic feel. And no, I'm super super excited. And you know, I couldn't have done it without my producer, Greg Greg Huberty. So um, it's really exciting. So this Friday, uh, the one with my buddy Alan, it's called Wildflowers, is coming out, All and right. then. Uh, Two weeks from now, the next Friday, it's going to be my song Shattered. So um, I'm excited, man. It's super exciting. You're the available. audience would like to know, yes, where to find these songs. Yes. Uh, where to find these songs. 
any streaming service that you listen to. You know, uh, I promote all my music. I, I need to get a website. I'm working on that right now, but I promote all my music on uh, my Facebook page, Owen Evans uh, Music. And then uh, I'm getting told I need to mention. Uh, so uh, a while ago, I produced a song called The Frost. And uh, I the cool thing about it is, you guys know Soul Asylum? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, yeah. So my, my I did Dan Murphy. Oh yeah, that's cool. So I I got to do a writing class with Ryan Smith, and uh, I that's how I uh, wrote the song uh, "The Frost," and that was a really cool experience. So I don't know. Uh, all my music, it's just been a really cool experience, up and downs, and it's been a roller coaster, man. It is a wonderful thing. You got to come back on the show once in a while and tell us how things are going. Obviously. Absolutely, man. I'd love to come back. All right. Well, be tell your producer there to pipe down. I'll handle it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Owen, you're a good guy. You got to come back. Absolutely, man. I'd love to. Thanks, love to. Pal. Have a good day. All right. You too, man. Ladies and gentlemen, The Frost, introducing Owen Evans, 16-year-old Owen Evans. What a nice kid. Yeah. Yes, and I will play The Frost at the end of the show. You're going to play The Frost at the end of the show? Good. We have a copy of it here to play on the show. That is magnificent. You don't have the vinyl, do you? I don't have the vinyl. <laughs> Where would you play it if you did have the vinyl? There's yeah. nothing left I, to play it on anyway. I have never owned a turntable in my life. Come oh, over to my house. house. Yeah. My sister has a turntable, actually. Not I either. will tell you. I, I, I got to be honest with you, to, and I don't know it's a prejudice or what it is, but listening to songs on vinyl, I always think it sounds phenomenal. Is that it's wrong, interesting. Doug? The pe well, yeah. people who grew up with vinyls, everyone like they all like the vinyl sound. Mm -hmm. I grew up with cassettes, and yeah. no one likes the cassettes. They're sound. coming back. Cassettes are, are they? coming back now. Oh, yeah, I can't even imagine. A lot of underground indie bands are only releasing stuff on cassettes now, and I think it's just to be a well, of course it's like it's a gimmick. Yeah, like even when I was a kid, I was like, wow, these things are awful. Yeah. No, oh. I, I I I share the nostalgia of records, and that's why I never got rid of them. And I listened to them. Yeah. There's something yep. about them. And it's the noise, you know, they get crackles, mm -hmm. snap pops in them. Pops, and I yeah. love the artwork on a lot of the albums. That's something that's lost uh, in the digital world. But from a, a, just a pure acoustic thing, it there it's not the same as digital. Digital now is, is just so pristine. And it's, yeah. And, you know, it's with, clean as it with gets. albums, you're, you're actually limited to the dynamic range that you could put on there. In other words, you, you can't engineer an album vinyl record with too much bass because it'll blow out the grooves and, and you can't even play it yep really so a lot of modern music you would not be able to it would sound totally different on an lp because they'd have to re-cue the record so that you could even physically play the thing so andy did you hold on to all those beetle albums i gave you i gave half to you and half to, to alex yeah they're um they're in a plastic uh dealy yeah, I, think I, I think I gave Alex a collection of mono mixes, uh, Beatle records for her wedding. Oh, did you really? Was wedding present. Yeah, they just released the original mono mixes, like the first six records. And like, she's a big Beatles fan. This would be perfect. Well, this uh, supposedly, I don't know if this is true. You probably know more about this than I would. But back when I worked at Capitol Records, uh, Japan did a pressing of all the Beatles songs. Mm -hmm. And apparently their technology at the time was far superior to everybody else's. Huh. Uh, and so the, the, Andy has half of them, Alex has the other half of the Japanese Beatles albums, and the sound is spectacular. Wow. Don't you think, Andy? Yeah. I mean, it really is good. There's no question about that. But how cool is that? Because I remember being 16 years old and being in a band. I thought I was a big deal. There's no question about that. You're up on stage at 16 years old, and people are cheering for you, and it's... That's an that's an interesting feeling. I will tell you that. That was so funny when you said. So what what got you guys in the bands? And I said, you know the answer. Yeah. And the <laughs> simultaneously, <laughs> Owen and I go, girls. Well, you know, so he's it. figured it out already. <clears throat> but again, I I have to make it very very clear. So oh oh God, you're it's so great. You're in one of the bands. Oh that's wonderful. You're in a band that's so cool. What do you play? Uh, you're a drummer. Okay. Well, I get, you know, Sarah and I have <laughs> played in bands together uh, many times and still go to jam sessions from time to time. And she's such a terrific singer that 
I, you're you're invisible when she starts singing. She's she, a great. Nobody singer, else yes. will recognize anyone. And the people have walked right. We're sitting right next to each other, and guys will walk up and start hitting on and say, "God, your 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 band's really good." And blah 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 blah. I'm like, "Hello." <laughs> Literally, literally, I'm literally right here, like the kids say today. Literally, yeah, literally, literally, literally. All right, so the audience uh, wants to know what's been going on with you, if you can. Yeah, talk no, about it. here uh, we go. Yep. And this was the reason. I, I, this is probably going to take five or ten minutes. So you go get, have a snack, whatever, and I'll get you updated on what's new in the world. So after a long period of unemployment, and I do want to talk about that as a separate thing. Uh, I'm taking a position. I start Monday. I'm running the sales team at Harry Brown's down in Faribault. It's a second generation family run dealership. Um, they carry uh, new vehicles or Chevrolet and GMC and then the Chrysler four pack, as we call it, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge and Ram. Um, so I'll be starting down there Monday. Uh, it was started by Harry himself, who I guess still has an office and comes in in his 80s and uh, he started it as a used car lot in 1968. And think about that. You know, the America's on fire, riots everywhere. We're fighting <laughs> Vietnam. It's like, we just need another used car lot. And then, <laughs> yeah. And, and all those cars were just, they weren't good. No, they were terrible. And so, you know, 58 years later, I'll be going down there. And I, I've enjoyed meeting him. I knew one of the uh, brothers that own it and run it through Facebook because we're both voters. And he had done something called the Great Loop, which is down the Mississippi, around Florida, up the East Coast, through the uh, Great Lakes, so on and so forth. So it was uh, interesting. But I do want to spend some time talking about, and, and don't send me questions about deals. I, I don't even know where the bathrooms are in this place yet. Give me a week and and, yeah, there you go. and then please reach out. I've, I've had a lot of people over the winter with car questions and advice, and I'll help anybody. I mean, that's just the way it is. But I don't know that much about the dealership yet, but I will shortly. But I wanted to talk about the whole unemployment thing because it was really interesting. Um, and I learned a, an awful lot. It is psychologically challenging to be unemployed for a long time. Yeah, and I will tell you, um, there were people that would reach out at a regular basis just to check in and maybe go to lunch a little bit. And Tom, you were one of them. I'm not, I'm not kissing your ass, but... You have no idea how much those phone calls meant. And Jimmy Francis, Peter Bourne, a whole bunch Jimmy. of other people that some yep. of you guys don't know. Um, and just simple things like, hey, let me take you to lunch. Because really what you're doing is sitting around working LinkedIn, waiting for jobs to post. And it it's a lot of hurry up and wait. It is tedious. It's boring. And of course, you know, I'm pretty financially conservative and having no income, it, it, you know, we didn't go out to dinner. We, you know, Sarah and I just sort of hunkered down and watched TV all winter. Uh, so for those of you in the support group, thank you very much. You have no idea how much all that meant. Oh, well, you're really um, making me feel bad about blocking you now. Well, I, you know, I never <laughs> well. expected the Jewish people to help. <laughs> oh, okay. well, oh. I, I know a couple of groups you can join. Yeah. Um, but I, I had a guest lined up. I met her. Um, she is a career counselor at something called uh, CareerWorks, uh, which is a, an agency that helps unemployed people. I, I learned a lot about the Minnesota unemployment uh, system. And I will tell you, it's fantastic. So I did file for uh, benefits and I did receive them. But the, the, it, it's much more than that. They really have all these different groups of people that will help either retrain give you interview skills, so on and so forth. This woman that was going to be on and her bosses, whoever they are, this is so stupid. Um, she said, I, I just can't get clearance because we're not sure it's our target audience and they want time to prep me. I'm like, okay, we never prep people. Prep for it's not a colonoscopy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, but she was terrific. And um, uh, I learned a lot about uh, networking through LinkedIn. And here's some advice I will give to people that have great jobs. You will have a great job until the day that you don't. Don't wait till you don't have a great job to work on your LinkedIn profile. There's so many things you can do uh, to enhance it. Uh, one of the things that she just suggested, and this was really one, probably one of the most moving things that happened. Recruiters will look through your recommendations, see what people have written about you. And she had said that, you know, it's not uncommon just to write your own recommendations, send them out to your friends, and then they rewrite them and post them. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. It's, it'd be too fakey. So I posted on there and I asked for recommendations. I said, not force. And I said, don't make anything up. But, you know, if you would, if you have five minutes, I'd really appreciate it. 
I was crying at some of them. I mean, from people I never expected would have responded and the nice things they said, it was really, really wonderful. I don't know if that, I don't think that helped me get into Harry Brown's because I knew Mike Brown and I, you know, in the car business, you're pretty connected locally. Um, but it was just the, the psychological lift from that was just wonderful. So keep up on your LinkedIn profile, post once in a while. Unfortunately, LinkedIn is almost getting as bad as Facebook. It's just, you know, yep. it, it's, there's professional posts and then there's that effing Biden or Trump's terrible. It's like, get, 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 <laughs> take that shit over to Facebook, get off LinkedIn. Mm. It's becoming um, like the Gen X Facebook almost. It is. Yeah. A little bit, but it is, I mean, I've got, it's like Facebook friends. I've got, I think 1800 first connections and, and it's all in the automotive industry and sales and stuff. So it's really for, if you're in a career at all, um, it, it's a great way to network. And that's where I found almost all the jobs that I was interested in. I didn't take everything that I could have. Um, I, I really figured out what I didn't want to do. You know, traveling around the country, leaving Sunday night and then getting home Friday night. I, I like my wife. I don't want to be on the road five mm -hmm. or six nights a week. I could do it for a week, but for, you know, three or four weeks out of the month, no thank you. So I'm really excited to, to do what I've always loved to do, which is help sell cars and uh, so on and so forth. So stand by. It's uh, That's what's new in my world. And if you wind up unemployed, don't be afraid of the Minnesota unemployment system. There's a shitload of people out there that are just waiting to help you. I took a couple of classes that I'd been remiss in, uh, in uh, keeping up on and Excel and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, I got to do something because... I sup I've never served in the army, but I, I suspect that it's kind of like being in the army where it's horribly boring and then suddenly terrifying mm -hmm. in really short periods of time. And some of these big com company recruiting systems, F you Ford Motor Company. <laughs> <laughs> I've applied for three jobs there. I'm still under consideration since Thanksgiving. <laughs> Whoa. They're not so, really on it. It's and funny. this is something that I will, I swear that I'll do because I will be at, in the market for salespeople and managers and so on and so forth. I will promise to answer every uh, uh, inquiry that I get. And and because the modern way is they just ghost you. It's just. Pfft. Yep. And the other thing is, I probably could have retired had I been vindictive and wanted to take people to court. You can't, <laughs> there is such a thing. The, let me put it this way. The market for white guys in their 60s isn't quite as strong as I previously <laughs> thought it was. <laughs> if you, if but you, you take can't say something like, um, well, where do you see yourself in five years? And you can always yeah. buffalo an answer to that. You know, I think I'll be doing such a great job that you want to promote me. Well, how yes. about 10 years? It's like, okay. Sitting behind your desk. That's right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's kind of tough there, you know, because now you're okay, but pretty soon you enter the next, the next age group, which is the 70 to death group. 70 to death. <laughs> now we're talking. Uh, that sounds uh, very friendly. Very sounds, nice. But it's it's like, guys, don't be stupid. What are you doing? You can't you can't do that. I mean, I'm not an HR professional, but even you know, I know what the rules are. Yep. Jo uh, Joe says that the Louisville Assembly plant is hiring. If you want to go down there and oh yeah, put cars together. <laughs> yep. yep. Something you always wanted is he's, heading, he's for, heading down there now. Fords are dead to me. General Motors, Stellantis. Uh, Rah, rah, rah. We'll see what happens with Stellantis there. And uh, well, you know, it's going to uh, be an interesting year. You and I should get together sometime and just, you know, to chat about what an asshole Henry Ford was. <laughs> I know he was. <laughs> He's very. because well, he was an anti Semite, but other than that. that yeah, that's it was just that Hitler thing, you know, that yeah, I never quite Hitler. got over. Yeah. <laughs> but my dad, that. that was the strangest things. You know, my, my dad, he, he would buy Fords. I, I don't know why. Uh, but, uh, like, you know, because one thing about my dad, if you ever suggested to him, oh, you know, you should just forgive and forget. No, no, yeah. no, no. That's those are not words that of joy to my dad. Nobody in the Middle East forgives and forgets. They're still bitching about stuff that happened 7000 years ago. This well, there's a lot of people doing That's that. Right. Yeah. I suppose that is true. Oh, I know. Henry no question, but... So, Doug, let me see. Let me take my takeaway sure. from what you just said. So. People should be upset if you delivered big for somebody for 36 years and then they get rid of you. Hmm. It, you know, it, it happens. I, I, and that's, this is why 
Well, so last year we were in the opposite position. I was working and, and you were unemployed. And so I was calling you all the time going, what are yeah. you going to do and hang in there and let's sort through all this. Stuff. Right. It just, it happens. And it's, it's a weird feeling, but like I said, um, if you got a great job, because you'll have a great job until the day you don't keep up on your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the problem that I have with it all, and I, I you know, I'm not getting too involved in this, but in your case, my case, and several other cases I've heard of, it is political. Oh yeah. If it's always political, which I just don't understand. We, our political parties are far too powerful in this country. We need to get them to back off. I mean, Mike, unless you believe it, well, Mike and I were talking about it at the beginning of the show, unless you agree with everything I say, I hate you. It's like, what? Yeah, that's, that's a, there was that story in the paper a couple of days ago about, you know, the, the, Trump, the Trump people are, are hiring people to work in their campaign. And apparently one of the first questions they ask is, do you believe the election was stolen? Mm -hmm. And of course, if you say, no, I don't, then they thank you and say, thanks for coming in keep moving on how about yeah. the other side mike you gonna talk about that too no i didn't think <laughs> of course so. not <laughs> i didn't see stories about that the other day so well they did find twenty thousand ballots in michigan that were fake uh, that was just in the news last night yeah I, that yeah day. i don't I, okay okay good well no i'm just telling you what was on the national news last night yeah I, it's yeah I, well, I which national, national news was that mm. Uh, it was not Fox, believe me, because I can't watch either CNN or Fox. I cannot watch those. Those two, uh, why don't you just get together and destroy America? You got the pukes at mm -hmm. uh, Fox and you got the pukes at CNN. They're horrible people. Yeah, and the, the crazy thing is Fox, they already spent, you know, like close to a billion dollars because of that. But apparently it, it wasn't enough to really scare them off. Because I just spent a billion dollars on what? Well, you, because they were sued for, you know, what, what was it, eight hundred and thirty million? Was that, yeah, was that it? it? Was. Yeah. For for what was that? I didn't even for know just, about that. I don't watch spewing that. spewing hate, and, and uh, you know, a lot of it had to do with the Dominion. Uh, oh, Dominion, yeah, that's, yeah, they're, yeah. The, the voting. Well, yeah, no, I mean that was a national story. story. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I I still do watch the national news on ABC, NBC, and CBS. It's not great, but it's a hell of a lot better than those two stations. It's entertaining, I think. Yeah, I suppose that's probably more than true. anything. But I don't, I don't see a, a political slant. I just, I see no, a, I an entertaining slant. I mean, if you really, yeah, I, I like watching, I, I like watching ABC especially. But mm -hmm. if you really wanted to give people the, you know, the, 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 the news, if you wanted to cover a lot of stories, you wouldn't have a six-minute intro. They do have a six-minute intro. That is, and then true. Um, the show's over basically by then. More me now. That's all I have to say. And, and our big TV in the basement. When we turn it on, for whatever reason, it's a Fox Live channel that comes up. Mm -hmm. And so I watched it for a couple minutes when Sarah was making dinner, and they're covering the bridge, and they're talking oh, about, about all this bridge, sort of yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, yep. And we flipped five hours later, of shutting everything down, and that comes back. They're still talking about the bridge. Well, I mean, they just cycle like the most the miserable thing. story. It's, it's yeah. Biden's fault. Did you know that? No, they didn't say that. They but I have heard that. some people. Well, there's a lot of that yeah. on, online, but there's a lot of everything online. Yeah, every oh, God, yes. current president's fault. But can yeah. you imagine doing five minutes live, five hours of live TV about the bridge? Well, they yeah. Just, I mean, they just, it's like 15 minutes of live TV that they rehash over and over. No, this this is actually a live really? feed. I don't wow. know what, what Fox station it is. It's kind of interesting, but. Mm. And they'll do a lot of live uh, press conferences and they show the whole mm. thing, you know, the setups. And what if you don't do that? Is that the thing is, if you don't do that, then people are going to tune in and they're not going to be talking about the bridge. And yeah. they'll call in and they'll say, why aren't you talking about the bridge? Yeah. And they can't say, I already talked about it. Yeah. Because, you know. But the bridge, the bridge is a, is a natural because of all the video. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, well, it's everything yeah, yeah, right, exactly. from every angle these days. Yeah. But Nothing I mean, can happen without yeah, being shot right. from But I mean, angles. there you get to watch the bridge collapse and you get to watch a, uh, like a, uh, a, uh, a carrier on the water. That's like, like 10 football lengths long. It is. Yeah. It's huge. And maybe that's too much. Yeah. Maybe so, a little hard to steer. I would imagine. I didn't verify this, but one of the things that was interesting they were talking about on Fox was, these super um, cargo ships, do you know how many mm -hmm. containers they carry? Oh, oh my God. Tons of 20,000. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 20,000. Yeah, it's like 90,000 tons or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, an insane what, what could go wrong. Yeah. 
Yeah. It is absolutely true. And now they're saying that that the the story I saw today seemed to suggest that that what caused the accident was filthy fuel. Filthy no, fuel. That's not true at all. It was the fact that the steering went wrong. Yeah, but the, that's the whole point of the that. Yeah. They're saying it went wrong because of the filthy fuel. I, it just blew out the electrical system. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just telling you what it's Who what knows? Means. You can't believe anything the news tells you. Well, I don't care where it's done. Filthy fuel sounds like an 80s movie. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does. That's true. It's like about the drag race circuit. Or the, or the matinee at Jake's. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. The, oh, how would you know? <laughs> I mean... I think my wife's listening. So. Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't know what you're talking Things about. Things up through contact. I, I was at a, I was doing a promo once in that, in that general vicinity. And um, I got out of there, the, the casino, I think it was in a casino, as I recall. So I'm driving home and I, 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 I look out in the distance. There's Jake's. I heard a lot about Jake's right. and I needed, I needed to use the men's room anyway. So I go in there. The first person I see is a guy I know, a uh -oh. guy who worked, who worked for the St. Paul newspaper. It's like mm -hmm. the first thing I saw. And and that guy, he's like, he's like, he's got his shirt off and there's like five strippers around him. And I thought to myself, you know what? Uh, you don't talk about me. I won't talk about you. Even though I wasn't actually doing anything wrong except urinating, you know, but he might yeah. have to do for all I know. So I have a strip club story and I wasn't in it. So I had the salesman working for me and it was his birthday and, and his name was ted williams of all things <laughs> there you go <laughs> and this is probably 1989 or 90 or something like that and so he goes down to rick's in the middle of the day with a couple of guys and one of them comes back and he goes you know it, i know it's you're not your deal but we gotta we gotta take care of teddy he's down there surrounded by strippers buying hundred dollar bottles of champagne it's just mm. it's just a car wreck and they're not even champagne that's right. the worst part right there's no sex in the champagne room chris yeah. rock so <laughs> we drive back down there and i walk in and it's like three in the afternoon and there's dan gladden and al newman at one table and they're <laughs> pissed not a shock. The girls are hanging out with ted williams <laughs> taking all his money <laughs> so we grab ted throw him in the car <laughs> he passes out in the car get him take him to his uh, roommate's house down by the airport out by the vet's hospital and uh <clears throat> wake him up, goes inside, and he starts uh, making breakfast. And he's still completely shit-faced. Mm. I said, oh, you're having breakfast for dinner. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, <laughs> it's 6 o'clock. He goes, morning, right? I said, no, it's 6 o'clock at night. And he goes, oh, shit, it's still my birthday. He calls a cab, and he heads back down there. Oh. Like, <laughs> Dude, you're <laughs> mad at your money. <laughs> That's unbelievable. No question. Oh my God. That's all I have to say. But Dan Gladden and Elman Newman are, are pissed because all the girls are ignoring them. And I don't know if they'd won their second World Series, but they'd they'd won their first. Well, Al Newman, you know, he probably was not a chick magnet. No. I'm just thinking, you know. Well, he, if you'd seen my friend Ted, he was he looked like a detour sign himself. Remember, remember when when he uh when Al Newman um he, he, he had some terrible, terrible medical problems and, and he wound up in a coma for like, I do remember that a though. week. Yeah. And the only reason I'd say that is because I, uh, I naturally, I had to observe something and I, and I said that he's the only guy I knew who gained 10 pounds in a coma. <laughs> oh my God. That's nice. You know, how, terrible thing. To how say. unfortunate would it be if you're a black guy and your parents Name you Alfred Newman. <laughs> Alfred Newman. Al Newman. Yeah, he. Uh, that's interesting. You bring up Dan Gladden and Al Newman because they used to hang out a lot together. Mm -hmm. They both hated my guts. It was really? hilarious. Oh God, they both hated me. Oh, they would hate my guts. That's for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely, Mike. You'd be hated too. There's no question because you tell the truth. Well, and also I like to have a little fun with very famous and rich people. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. They're, no, it's just. No I mean, why whatsoever. not? They're, they're they got all the all the everything going for him the way i see it so just a little joke you know yeah like That's a little a rod carew joke you know just well it's a particularly rod carew jokes exactly by the way i just got a text message on my phone from someone and he didn't say who it is but apparently some high-ranking official in the united states mm -hmm. was talking about the bridge in baltimore mm -hmm. and he said apparently to, to this guy he said i cannot tell you how many times i've taken the train across that bridge 
There are no train tracks. No, that's not a railroad. <laughs> So you're trying to try to make yourself look good and you have no idea what you the know, hell you're in, talking about. In fairness, the Minneapolitans or people from the seven county mosquito control district did exactly the same thing when 35W went down. Mm, yes. I yes. just went over that four weeks ago. It's yeah. like, well, it's a bridge. Of course you everybody went over. <laughs> you're not that special. I am also the special impacted. people are the ones that fell into the water and yeah. lived. I went over that bridge once. That and was it? Just, just once. once. And because, you know, it was an easy, it was a, a lot of people took the bridge to get to the studio, the yeah. KQ studio in, yes. near yep. Dinky Town. But, but I tried it once and that thing was bobbing and weaving. And I, I just said, that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. Not that I saw what was coming, but, yeah. but still, it just made me very uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, Andy can tell you that, uh, my daughter, Alex, his sister, Alex, was working for Bilski over at North American Banking Company, and she was on her way home, and she always went over that bridge, but she, for some reason, was a little late. Mm -hmm. She she would have been on that bridge probably had she left work on time. Yeah. So there so, must be a God. That's all I have to say. No, that, Alex is never on time, that right? That seals so, it yeah, from <laughs> Well, there... <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. She's never on time anyway. Yeah. So I guess Pretty I guess what's going to happen. I always it always amazes me when people say something like, "Oh man, you know, um I just uh I I I saw the bridge fell down and the thing is, you know, it was like um I uh, I was going to pick you up. And if I'd picked you up, I Probably, you know, would have been on that bridge. Yeah, oh, everybody loves to say that. Yeah, I know. And it's I, like the five billion people that went to Woodstock. Yeah, exactly. right, right, oh, exactly. I know a lot about that. Mm -hmm. The back row was in the Atlantic Ocean, apparently. Because I was a freshman in college, and I, I talked to hundreds of people yeah. who were at Woodstock. Uh, I never had any. Can you imagine going to a concert that had 500,000 people at it anyway? You couldn't no. hear anything, though. No. Oh, the God, it must have been horrible. No, but, but the problem is you couldn't hear anything, which I could tolerate, but you can't wash anything. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't. You're right. And that's where I'm out of there. I can do drugs and wallow in filth at home. <laughs> oh, that's a good oh, point. the biggest concert I've ever been. I don't think I've ever been to a really massive one like that. I haven't either. There's no desire, fact, really. Well, the ones over, uh, they used to, when I was at Capitol Records, I used to have to, I can't even remember where the hell it was but there were some big crowds there but yeah. i had easy access to the stage so it didn't bother me because you you fly you're one of those guys in the helicopter maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Now that would be one that would be different i would though that would be fascinating i saw the dixie chicks at the xl energy center oh that yeah was probably the only huge arena show i think i've ever seen yeah mm -hmm. but they it was pretty good actually for yeah. what it was the x's and sound systems are so good right now i i don't mind big shows at the X and Target. They sound really good, but I prefer smaller, like yep. State Theater and the Orpheum. Oh, those are oh, great. wonderful. Yeah. Fitzgerald wonderful. over in St. Paul, the Palace, that, you know, that hold maybe about a thousand people. That I think that's about but the, But the Palace, uh, you have to stand there. Uh, no, you can't. There's seating on the balcony. There's some seating, yeah. yeah. But I call I, it the Lodge, I think. But so. I, I think if there was a, you know, if there was like a really great band playing there, you know, like Jason Isbell in the yeah. 400, uh, which is the show I saw there. No, no. It's like, here I am. I'm, you know, I'm an elderly man and I have to stand for three and a half hours. No, Ooh, you I don't want to do I that. I don't like it either. And my wife's 4'11", so she always sure. finds the the six foot eight guy that's going to stand <laughs> oh, right in always. front of her. Oh, always. <laughs> oh, and the guy's not only six foot eight, he's wearing a hat. Right. And, right. and <laughs> to make it just, hat on. to make it better, like, and this, I knew this would happen, but I had next to me and, and, you know, everybody's like touching each other, yeah. which is disgusting. You know, I mean, it's never the right people touching me anyway. <laughs> yeah. And, and this was, so this woman, she's standing next to me and she's singing along and, uh, and, and it's like, so I, there was an intermission and at the intermission. I, I said, I took out my ticket, you know, and I kind of caught her attention and said, I said, I'm, you know, I keep looking at this ticket, but I don't see you on it. <laughs> there was an old SNL skit with uh oh god what's her name Victoria Jackson yeah mm -hmm. at a Van Morrison concert and she's in front of Will Ferrell and his <laughs> wife on a date yeah. and she insists on standing up and dancing oh, to every song of it's course. hysterically Whoops. funny well I actually I experienced that at a Van Morrison concert <laughs> and the funny thing is who would want to dance or do anything 
to a Van Morrison concert, you know, basically if it's after say 1965, right? Because he's a complete asshole. Yeah, and, he and, is, yeah. and he doesn't want to entertain anyone. He finds it, and you know, he's like, it's like, it's, it's he's indignant about the fact that people are forcing him to play because he's got all this so money. Arrogant. Yeah, he really. I saw him at Northrop about 15 years ago, and he, he was terrific. But the band, you could tell, was terrified of him. Yeah. I mean, he just oh yeah. Give everybody the stink eye. And- yeah. Oh, he's, he's always just derided the band. Yeah. And he, you know, and there's never one there that's that's constant because yeah. he fires all of them anyway. And he talks about how shitty they are. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's known for that. Yeah. He was my favorite musician when I was in high school. Well, yeah. He's a great songwriter and a great. I mean, he's yeah. got a one octave range. I mean, he really oh, yeah. does has no singing. Well, natural talent yeah. but he's got a right. great tone and phrasing he just it's he's like he's great but then, he's a yeah great just, asshole too. just a jerk i mean he, but back then you know his the first album was astral weeks yeah. which was a killer yeah and uh i think the second one was probably moon dance it's, it's a good. marvelous night i know that yeah. yeah right so that was a great album too and but then he decided you know why not put out two albums a year and that's where things went bad very quickly and then he became this incredible jerk you know yeah. i mean you know if he's hanging out with eric clapton you know and I, it's funny you bring that up because i eric is the reason that i started playing electric guitar he was musically he was a big hero of mine for a long time i i went on on and learned about other people but and then as a person and it's really just been well actually there were some incidents back in the 70s but it's in the last 10 years he's gone completely mental yeah. it's like eric what the hell are you doing yeah. Is it drugs? No, he's been uh, he's been straight for a long time. But was it the drugs that turned him into a prick? I don't way know. Way back in the day. Well, there was some racial incidents that he got. Mm. I, oh, I think really? it was in the early '80s. He was drunk in some bar in London, screaming yeah. about all the Pakistanis invading England, and well, yeah. so he's right on the money. Is that it was saying? kind of <laughs> almost as bad as oh shit, what's his name now? He's not from Australia. Everybody thinks he is. The actor, uh, Mel Gibson. Oh, yeah. Mel Gibson, when, yeah. when he went deep on the cops and the Jews and all this sort of stuff, yeah. Eric kind of did the same thing. And the cop was a Jew. Remember yeah. that? Yes, yeah. he was, was a Jew. Uh, yeah. The cops and the Jews and the cop was a Jew. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, okay. I only saw, I saw, an, I saw one of his movies once, and it was, it was playing at like the Man Quadruplex or yeah, something. Sure. Sounds like someone who's paralyzed. Maybe, yeah, maybe I got the Indeed. name wrong. Indeed. But um, so I, what I, what I did was I just bought a ticket to to see another movie, and then I went in to see his movie because uh-huh. I, I wasn't going to contribute to the box I office. See. I felt very smug about that, and I'm sure it bothered him to this day. So here's oh, an interesting yeah. Mel trivia. He is he is an American. Yeah. And his father, a famous Nazi sympathizer, apparently, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. won on Jeopardy and took the money and moved him to Australia. That's how they wound up. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. And then did he move? Yeah. Did he move his Catholic church there too? Yeah, the, the, he was into some weird stuff. The old Latin masses, where the priests have their back. <laughs> oh, to the yeah. Congregation. Oh, yeah. And, yep. Yeah. Well, you know, he Jesus was going to go all the way. That's yeah. All. They all do. Oh my God, the show's over. I just looked at my. So you guys have been on for an hour already. Oh, well, that's, that's an hour long show, right? Well, I like it in like 54 minutes. You know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Any closing words? Um, if you have car questions, I'm back in the game or I will be shortly. People know how to get a hold of me on Facebook. And I don't know what my email address is going to be down there yet, but I'm going to shoot for Doug at harrybrowns.com, but we'll see what happens. Are they going to let you come and do the show once in a while? Well, uh, I think they're they're listening to this one, and then based on uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> talked about Nazis, Jews. They talked yep, about right. Pakistanis. Mm-hmm. They brought them all up. Yep, yeah. yep. They well, insulted well. pretty much everybody. Yeah. Uh, if I'd known, I probably would have turned the heat on really high. God damn yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. We will talk to you later. Thanks a lot. See you later, Tommy. See ya. Bye. Reminds me how you 
talking money.